Hello and welcome. We are going to look at the last question, question 10 of our UCE 2020 chemistry paper 2. So carbon dioxide is produced by the reaction of calcium carbonate with hydrochloric acid. Write an ionic equation for the reaction one and a half marks. For you to come up with an ionic equation, we need to first know the molecular equation. So remember, ionic equation must contain ions. So we must first come up with a molecular equation, but if you know it, you can write it instantly. So we shall have our hydrochloric acid reacting with our calcium carbonate. And then we shall form calcium chloride as our salt. Cl2 plus water plus our carbon dioxide gas. Second, we shall have to write the state symbols solid aqueous liquid carbon dioxide is a gas while our acid is aqueous so we need to separate the ions present in these aqueous solutions we know that hydrochloric acid will be present as hydrogen ions okay third we can have to first balance the equation we shall put it to here so we have two hydrogen ions plus two chloride ions plus our calcium carbonate which is a solid we can leave it this will give us our calcium chloride this is ionic so we'll have calcium ions plus two chloride ions plus water and then plus carbon dioxide so in this format we need to identify which ions are spectator ions spectator ions are those ions that do not participate in a reaction for example, we have two chloride ions on the reactant side and two chloride ions under the product side. So these ones basically have not done anything. They have not changed, so they are spectating. In that case, we cancel them out. So we shall be left with two hydrogen ions reacting with calcium carbonate to form calcium ions, water, and carbon dioxide. So this becomes our ionic equation. So the first one, the two hydrogen ions, calcium carbonate solid, Calcium ions, aqueous carbon dioxide and water. This is our first ionic equation. However, most of us are used to the second one, the simpler one, whereby they tend to break down the calcium carbonate to form the hydrogen ions with the carbonate ions to form carbon dioxide and water. So sometimes this one is also broken down into calcium ions plus carbonate ions, such that this cancels with that. And in that process, you will end up with, with that. So well-balanced ionic equation with the right state symbols, you can get your one and a half max. Part B, the sketch graphs in figure 3 show variations in volumes of carbon dioxide evolved with time. When equal masses of cal calcium carbonate lumps were reacted separately with this volume, portion of 1.0 molar solutions of mono basic acids T and R at room temperature. So both acids are monobasic, meaning that the more ratio of our acid to the base, in this case it is one to one. So they are both monobasic. So we expect them to behave in the same way in terms of number of molecules since they have used the same volumes and the same molar concentrations. So they are asking that they have used lumps. Lumps basically means some big chunks of calcium carbonate you know just like when you break a small piece of when you break a big piece of chalk into some larger fragments we shall call those ones chunks but if you crush it into powder then that will be powder so which of the acids is a stronger acid now we have volume of carbon dioxide on the y-axis and time on the right meaning as we add the acid to the calcium carbonate we start seeing carbon dioxide being evolved as shown in our equation whenever the acid reacts with our calcium carbonate but now they ask which of the acids is stronger acid T is a stronger acid so acid T is a stronger acid the question is why or which reasons can we give one stronger acids will always yield they are most likely to yield more volume given that in this case we have the same volume and same concentrations so our strong acid must yield a higher volume compared to acid R. 
So if I look at volume for R and volume for T, Vt is greater than Vr. So us producing more carbon dioxide means we have more hydrogen ions in solution from the acid. And that means that acid is likely to be stronger. That's one. The second one will depend on the rate of reaction. As you can see, this rate for T is steeper. In less time or in equal time, for example, at time T, the acid T will have produced more volume than acid R. You know, so the rate of reaction is also faster with T. So one, T yields or produces a larger volume of carbon dioxide gas. And then two, it also reacts with the carbonate faster. As you can see, it reacts faster. This graph here is steeper than the one for R. Those are the two reasons we can give as to why T is our stronger acid. Remember, stronger acids, they tend to release enough hydrogen ions in solution when they are in aqueous form. So last question, sketch on the same axis of figure 3 the graph that would be obtained when, equal, when an equal mass of calcium carbonate powder was reacted with the same volume 50 cubic centimeters of 1.0 molar acid T at room temperature. So they have maintained everything, temperature, volume, molar concentration, the only thing they have changed now is the powder if you have powder compared to our chunks or lumps powder powdered calcium carbonate will have a higher surface area for the acid to react so that means it's likely to act faster so our graph will go like this it will be steeper than acid T that was given but the volume of carbon dioxide evolved will remain the same because we are dealing with the same volume and the same concentration. So the reaction will basically just take place faster, but the volume given off will remain the same. So this is our sketch. That's all I had for our paper and section A. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Till next time.